The twisting case of Ebby Steppuk contains details that may be disturbing or upsetting to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Here at Dark Case Documentaries, we release at least one new true crime video every week. We hope you choose to join our quickly growing community by subscribing to the channel. To help further our work, please also consider supporting us on Patreon, linked below. Our love and sympathy goes out to all those that knew and loved Ebby. Ebby Jane Steppuk, a senior at Little Rock Central High School and a resident of Little Rock, Arkansas, was born on March 31st, 1997. She had been attending a private school prior to that year when she made the decision to switch to a public school. Ebby made the choice to move out of her family's home at the beginning of the school year because she decided to have more autonomy over her relationship with her parents. She was now spending the majority of her time staying with her grandparents and living with friends. In October of 2015, Ebby had reached the age of 18 years old. On October the 21st, she was absent from her class, something that was not typical of Ebby. Two days later, she went to a party on Friday evening, the 23rd of October. The next day, October the 24th, 2015, Ebby went to her mother's house and shared some horrifying news with her stepfather. She told him that she had been gang R-worded by four different people. She said this happened at the party the day before and that she intended to file a report with the authorities on the incident. She also asserted that the assault was caught on a mobile phone camera. Later that evening when Ebby's mother, Laurie Jernigan and her stepfather tried to phone her, they did not receive a response. Her stepfather suspected that she had gone to obtain the recording of her attack, vital evidence that would surely put this case to rest. That evening, Ebby's cell phone placed two brief calls to the Little Rock Police Department that lasted around one minute each. However, the authorities stated that they did not have any record of receiving a report from Ebby's phone. The records of Ebby's phone indicated that during the evening, she sent several of the men that she had accused of attacking her text messages on which she threatened to call the police on them for the crimes they committed against her. On October the 25th, 2015, Ebby's older brother Trevor spoke with Ebby over the phone at about 2pm. During the course of their conversation, Trevor observed that she gave off the impression of being disorientated. When he first phoned her, she informed him that she was parked outside of his house, but when he walked outside to look for her car, he did not see her automobile. When he contacted her once more, she answered the call and informed him that she was currently driving, but was unsure of where she had parked her vehicle. After she said, I'm fucked up, she hung up her phone and the conversation was over. This was the last time that Ebby was heard from. On October the 27th, a security officer at Chalamont Park, a neighborhood park in West Little Rock, found Ebby's 2003 Volkswagen Passat abandoned in a parking lot near to a forested area. The security guard made a call to the police and waited for around two hours for an officer to arrive. However, no officer ever turned up. The next day, while he was doing his rounds, he observed that the truck was still in the same location. He dialed the police dispatch number once more and waited for them to arrive. They arrived roughly an hour later and discovered that the car did indeed belong to Ebby. The battery in the automobile had died, there was no gas left in the tank and the key was still in the ignition of the vehicle. The scene suggested that Ebby had vanished while her car was still running and it ran until the fuel ran out. After the finding of Ebby's car, multiple searches were conducted of Chalamont Park. However, no additional evidence was found in that location. 
According to the findings of an investigation that was carried out in 2017, all of the people that Ebby had accused of SA had been spoken to by law enforcement but there were no formal searches of their mobile devices for the supposedly recorded attack on Ebby. In an effort to bring more attention to Ebby's case, both her mother and her brother made an appearance on Dr. Phil in December of 2017. The Stepik family was willing to pay a reward of $50,000 to anyone who provided information that could lead to the location of their daughter. Margie Foley is a close family friend and the mother of one of Ebby's best friends. While Margie Foley was doing a private inspection of the location near where Ebby's car was found, she claimed to the authorities that she smelled decomposition while she was there. When the police arrived on the scene, Margie claimed that she was sort of dismissed by the policeman, who reassured her that it would just be an animal or something and he added that the park had been combed by recovery dogs who would have detected the scent of human decomposition. On May the 24th, 2018, at around 10 a.m., while performing a second search on Chalamont Park, the police discovered skeletal remains in a drainage pipe near to where Ebby's automobile had been found. The discovery was made as the police were conducting a search. After further investigation, it was determined that the remains were those of Ebby. Ebby remained a missing person for nearly three years before her body was finally discovered. How Ebby got there, and how she wasn't found earlier, remains a mystery. The case of Ebby Stepuk remains unsolved. How do you think that Ebby's remains were missed? Please discuss in the comments. To help us in our work, please consider supporting us on Patreon, the link is in the description, and please subscribe for more dark cases, and make sure to turn on the notifications. Don't forget to like the video to help spread this unsolved case. Thank you.